Hi guys, it's Greta here from RunForFit.com and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the best practices for learning forefoot running. So when it comes to learning forefoot running, many ask, where do I start? And the number one thing you need to do is create an environment where you are fully aware of how your foot is striking the ground when you run. So like it or not, this involves you going barefoot because what you want to do is you want to weed out the bad heel strike running mechanics. But that doesn't mean that you need to fully and completely convert to barefoot running because I know so many shod runners are completely turned off of barefoot running. But to really jumpstart your forefoot running journey and to take the most effective approach is to integrate barefoot running drills into your training. Because barefoot running is the only way you're gonna tell where you are landing on your foot when you run. Ultimately, you need to try barefoot running little by little each day because you really need to get a pulse of how you are landing on your foot if you want to run properly in shoes. So running barefoot is about building the right neuromuscular adaptations that will allow you to execute the best and safest forefoot strike landing pattern for when you run in your shoes. In my opinion, runners get a lot of bad advice from coaches and from other runners about how to run. But this is the first thing I want you to do when it comes to learning forefoot running is to take a step back and forget everything that any coach or anyone has ever told you about running biomechanics. And this includes forgetting about how, what they told you about swinging your arms, about how to stretch and when to stretch, about footwear, for example, that more cushioning is better. So I want you to forget all that because a lot of their beliefs contradicts the scientific literature and that's what I primarily talk about on my blog which is linked below. From now on I want you to start from scratch and you are going to do this by listening to your body and this is when you are running barefoot and from that you are going to create your own forefoot running style based on the sensory feedback from the ground and notice that I use the phrase create your own running form. If you watch many East African runners, most of these runners ran barefoot for many years prior to becoming professional runners. And because they ran barefoot, with having no one tell them exactly how to run, most of these runners develop their own signature flow. Some, for example, have a higher arm carriage. Some have a higher knee drive. Most of these runners, however, have a very high back kick. Many swing their arms past their midline. Most look down at the ground when they run and not straight ahead and etc. But most East African runners have one thing in common is that the vast majority of them are not heel strike runners. And this is contrast to traditional beliefs uh, in biomechanics and that we are told to stare straight ahead when we run. We are told to pump our arms back and forth and to not let our arms swing past our midline. We are told to have a high knee drive and many coaches, especially during the time before Born to Run and uh, before Dr. Lieberman's publications on barefoot running children in Kenya, these coaches told us to run with a heel strike. And in my opinion, many of these teachings is why many shod runners have the same choppy, rigid, robotic heel strike running form that does nothing but cause injury. Because if you look at the world record holders like Haley Gaber Selassie, Taranish Dababa, Kenan Sibikili, these runners have running biomechanics that closely approximate barefoot running biomechanics, and I'm talking more about their foot strike mechanics. As for the rest of their mechanics, most East African runners just let their upper body do what it wants, which is why they look very natural and very comfortable when they run, simply because they're not repressing a lot of the motions that traditional biomechanics would suggest that we suppress. So this is something that I want you to really think about. Long distance runners who are elite, and I mean the ones who are winning and breaking world records, aren't heel striking and the majority of them are forefoot striking for a reason. And that reason is to shield the body from very high impact collision forces that plague many heel strike runners. Barefoot running is the main thing that enabled most East African runners to develop very good, safe forefoot running biomechanics. And who's to say that you can't do the same? In fact, you can do the same by running barefoot. For me, I started running barefoot two to three times a week for about one to three miles. If you start off with one mile of running barefoot and it feels great, then run for another two miles. But of course, you don't want to fall victim to the too much too soon syndrome because you don't want to get injured and lose time away from your training. 
And from my experience, the best results was when I ran barefoot for about three miles before doing my regular runs in my minimalist shoes. And that brings me to the second thing I want to mention. Is since what you wear on your feet in most cases determines foot strike, you want to avoid wearing cushion heeled running shoes and instead you want to be running in a running shoe that is zero drop so a flat racing flat like running shoe that has very minimal compressible foamy underfoot materials because that's going to place your foot in a better position for you to avoid heel strike that does not mean that you can't wear running shoes with cushioning because the best runners in the world like galen rupp who is a four foot striker who, by the way, wears very thick cushion running shoes, maintains his forefoot strike very well. But you also have to remember that he is a pro, and he, along with Alberto Salazar, have training aids that literally have engineered his forefoot running form, and he is so good at maintaining his forefoot running biomechanics that he can pretty much run in any type of cushion running shoe within reason. But for now, what I want you to do is to avoid thickly cushioned running shoes because remember we want to create that non-heel strike environment in your early stages of forefoot running because that's how you are going to grow as a forefoot runner. So I hope this helps. For more tips on forefoot running and barefoot running, please visit my blog, runforefoot.com, and good luck with your training. Bye.